Welcome back to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to talk about temperature scales and how to convert between the three temperature scales we will see in chemistry. Here in the United States, we get bombarded with temperature readings um, in Fahrenheit and in Celsius, but there's also a third type of temperature scale used for chemistry called Kelvin. So how do these three uh, very distinct temperature scales relate? So, uh, once again, the temperature can be measured in the following units, degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. For chemistry, we will, we will use Celsius in the majority of the cases, but there will also be times when we go to the Kelvin scale. Um, because chemistry is an international science, um, we do not tend to use Fahrenheit, which is pretty much used only in the United States. Um, so let's look at these three scales and see how they differ and how they may be the same. So on the left we have Fahrenheit. Now Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it boils up here at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And we use water because water is the universal solvent. It is also the most abundant substance on earth and it has a very low specific or very high specific heat which means it takes a lot of energy to change the degrees of water up and down. So if we look at this again we're comparing Fahrenheit to Celsius freezing point of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit that is the same as zero degrees Celsius and then the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit and that levels out at 100 degrees Celsius now, for me, making sense of the world, I would say 0 and 100 are a little bit easier to remember, but also make a little more sense than do 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212, which are obviously easy numbers to remember compared to 0 and 100. But then we realized also that there are certain cases where we end up with negative values for both Celsius and um, Fahrenheit, and we then transfer over to this scale, which is the Kelvin scale, which sets zero as what is known as absolute zero. And absolute zero would be when all matter stops, when all vibrations of all molecules and atoms ceases to exist, and therefore everything would stop at zero degrees Kelvin. So this scale allows us to work without negative values for the temperature. And it also, we will find when we get to the gas laws, the gas laws use temperature in the denominator. And in both the Fahrenheit and the Celsius scale, you could have a zero degree value. And we know that if you put a zero degree value in the denominator, that makes it a no solution or null set. It cannot be divided. So therefore, the Kelvin scale allows us to work consistently in numbers that will function for all the laws of chemistry. So Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. So let's look at how we can work between these three. And first we're going to look at how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So to change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you multiply the Celsius degree by 9 over 5, you add 32, and then you get the Fahrenheit temperature. 9 over the 5 5 is the same as 1.8 degrees Celsius. So 1.8 times the degree Celsius plus 32 will give you Fahrenheit. To change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we take the Fahrenheit temperature and subtract 32. We then multiply by 5 over 9, which is the same as multiplying by 0.556. So once again, Fahrenheit minus 32 times 0.556 will give you the degree Celsius. So converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's look at some examples of this and we're going to convert 50 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we're going to plug those values in and we get 1.8 times the 50 degrees Celsius which gives us 90. Then we're going to add 32 so our Fahrenheit temperature is 122 degrees Fahrenheit at 50 degrees Celsius. Now if we were to take 50 degrees Fahrenheit and convert it to Celsius, we're going to plug the 50 degrees Fahrenheit in, subtract 32, which gives us 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 
then multiply that by 0 0.556, which gives us a value of 10.008, which we're going to just simply round to 10 degrees Celsius. Now, the conversion from Celsius to Kelvin is much easier. We're not going to use any strange vari variables like 5 over 9 or 1.8. We're simply going to say to change from Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. And to change from Kelvin to Celsius, you subtract 273. So if I need to convert 70 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, I'm going to take 70 degrees Celsius, add 273, and I'm going to get 343 Kelvin. Pretty simple. Now to convert Kelvin to Celsius, so if I have 370 Kelvin, I need to make it Celsius. I'm simply going to plug that in, 370 Kelvin minus 273, and that will give us a value of 97 degrees Celsius. So again, pretty simple. Add 273 to go from Celsius to Kelvin, and subtract 273 to go from Kelvin to Celsius. So in your SOFIA tutorial, you do have a PDF, and the first PDF converts Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius, and the second half of the PDF then changes Celsius to Kelvin and Kelvin to Celsius. I do uh, caution you that on letter G on the first half, please be careful and make sure you're answering the question being asked. So why don't you go ahead and print that PDF out, Go ahead and stop the video, work on those problems, and then come on back and see how you did. So let's see how you did. So 37 degrees Celsius is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that number is significant because that's normal body temp. So 98.6 would be a normal body temp, and that equates to 37 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 100 degrees Celsius is 212 Fahrenheit, and that was the same as the scale factor we looked at earlier on the three thermometers. 75 degrees Fahrenheit is 23.9 degrees Celsius. 110 degrees Fahrenheit comes out to 43.3 degrees Celsius. Negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit comes out to negative 23.3 degrees Celsius. And I warned you to be careful on this one because this is asking us to go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. So first we have to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and then add the 273 and we get 321.8 Kelvin. So in the conversions for Kelvin to Celsius, we should have... 20 degrees Celsius comes out to 293 Kelvin. 313 Kelvin is 40 degrees Celsius. 65 degrees Celsius is 338 Kelvin. 900 Kelvin is 627 degrees Celsius. Negative 30 degrees Celsius is 243 Kelvin. 400 Kelvin comes out to 127 degrees Celsius. And 200 degrees Celsius is 473 Kelvin. So hopefully this will help you as we convert between Fahrenheit, only used in the United States really, to Celsius, the temperature scale we will typically use in our chemistry classes, and then the Kelvin scale, which we will always use in the gas laws, but is used in most other chemistry as well. So keep working on your chemistry.